Greetings everyone. I just did a really long video about this. I'm going to try and do a shorter video. Um, it's still challenging sometimes for me to do shorter videos. But what I'm working on right now is Thriving Relationships. It's, it's a series, a book, and it's some exercises in a workbook. And it's work that I've done to help my relationships and to look into my relationships and to change my beliefs so that my new beliefs will be more expansive. So then thus my relationship with time, money, food, health, uh, loved ones, uh, my child, um, love, giving and receiving, um, yeah, time, I don't know if I already said that, is more expansive and more open. So there's not a ceiling there. There's not a ceiling around money about how much money I can make or, and there's, there's not beliefs that are constrictive and keeping me from, from success, from confidence, from feeling peace. And so the first thing that you do with each one of these things, everything that you, anything in your life that you feel constrictive around. So I started this around time and money and I hadn't really seen the exploration in this, but I, I was saw, I had some dynamics around time and money that was obviously not successful for me around my relationships that felt very constrictive. And I did an inventory of my first time I could remember having any relationship with time to now. So my relationship with time is kind of what I was exploring. And you're not looking at every little thing, but you're looking at the things that just stick out to you. So that happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. And then with money, it's the same thing. What's the first time you remember being touching with money, uh, having experience with money? It could not even be related to money and that's okay, but it's just what your memory is and you'll find how it gets woven. So I had a thing around time and money that was both about personal value. And so I didn't want to look at time and I was kind of a punk about it. And I didn't want to look at money, budget, anything or whatever, because I put a, a kind of, I felt undervalued around some situations that happen with time and with money. And so I created kind of, that had woven this whole relationship that I had with creating a very constrictive relationship around not wanting to look at money, not wanting, being very challenged, challenged to create contracts or to create agreements around money, to talk to loved ones about money, to address if I had been late or just the whole issue around time. So yeah, my constriction around time and money made me very, seem kind of like hippie, loose, relaxed. I don't want to look at it. Uh, I can be there whenever I want. Um, I don't trip out about other people being late, which I didn't, but that's the way I, I was but I had tripped out about someone being late when it all started. So the, but there are also the other side of that can be constrictive is when you're, when you're, anytime you're very constrictive and very angst around money or time, and you can be very loose about it, but you also could be very tight about, around money and, and budgeting and money. It just makes you feel like this and time, someone else being late freaks you out and pisses you off. Uh, you, stress yourself out about being on time you're 15 minutes early but that 30 40 minutes you did to get ready is like you're freaking out about it uh, there should be a relationship with sleep so you're freaking about out about sleeping because you haven't been getting sleep um, and there could be other things involved with that but just changing those relationships we look at those relationships we see the belief that's behind that the constrictive belief and we create a non-constrictive belief, a positive belief, and we we practice that that belief. So that old belief that I am not I'm not worthy, um, I my value is is very low and I'm not really worthy of money and there's not really enough money to go around and if people are making money they're stepping on the backs of other people. These are beliefs I had. Stepping that that new belief that I could come into that I'm consciously creating be that there's there's enough money for everybody and as i be as i express and explore and create more wealth and more and more wealth and riches i can give and i can share and i can create that more experiences for other people to also be wealthy and so you know that's kind of balancing out the the negative story i had before so you'll find your own positive, expansive belief. So you're looking for an expansive belief that has no ceiling. And so, uh, and so that new expansive belief with time that, you know, that I, time is valuable. 
time, my, my time and other people's time, and we, me respecting it, shows how, how much I value them and I value myself. And so then that puts me in a totally different relationship with time. I'm not a punk about time anymore. I'm not feeling like react, reactionary to it, towards it. I'm seeing this as an opportunity for me to show how much I value someone by showing up when I agreed to be there, by, by uh, honoring my time for myself and when I need time to myself and, and honoring being able to read that if I'm hanging out with someone else and I can tell they kind of need some time to themselves and they're probably having a hard time asking for it and just asking, do you need some time to yourself? You know, could be your loved one or whatever. You're hanging out together all the time and, and you need to create some of that space there. So that's, I was going to make a lot, this was shorter than my other video, <laughs> but uh, so that's, that's, that is creating thriving relationships and the benefits of creating thriving relationships, of creating healthy relationships with time, loved ones, money, food, health, sleep, whatever it be that, that is uh, feeling constrictive and challenging for you, by creating those healthy relationships, you're looking at creating health, abundance, uh, uh, confidence, peace. You're opening a whole avenue for these to be what you're stepping into and what you're creating with your life. There's going to be an ease with each of these two. The way you're dealing with all these is going to be feel you're not you're not fighting against these old beliefs and these old concepts and these old fears or the, even old traumas. And so one of the things that we, we need to do too is we're looking at each of these and doing uh, doing our inventory on it from then till now, looking at uh, old beliefs and then creating new beliefs to counteract that. Take that new belief and for 30 days, have it written on a piece of paper in your pocket, have it on your phone too as a reminder and have it written there or you could even do an audio of you singing it to yourself, it doesn't really matter. But have the, every day have it have it uh, cycle to you like three times a day, read it a couple times every day for 30 days and, and create that as your new mantra of, as you kind of locking in that new belief and, and notice whenever the old belief comes up from an experience you're having through the day, through having to look at your checkbook or, or you do, you end up being late. I mean, not all this stuff's just going to be all fixed or whatever, or someone else is late and you're getting pissed at them. Um, so yeah, you could say, well, you know, someone else being late and you being pissed at them, you don't have to be pissed at them personally. They may have a bad relationship with time, but it may mean that you don't want to do business with them because you're not feeling valued. I and mean, you can just tell them if you're going to be late again, I'm going to have to stop having this business meeting with you. It's just not going to work. It doesn't work with me. It's not, I'm trying to create a new relationship with Tom. You'd like to do that with me too, you know? Um, and it's okay to open the door to that. And it's okay to close the door to people, be it friends or be it business people. Um, you'll still survive and there'll still be other other venues for success. But you don't want to push people away because they're just, because of your, just, you're an emotion. You want to be clear about where you're coming from and what you're looking for and what's the new relationship you're trying to create. So that being said, when these things come up as you're exploring all these and you're spending those 30 days saying that when you're first writing these out and if there's a big trauma that came up and you're seeing that and it freaks you out, this is the way I've looked at the traumas that come up. So if there's a trauma that comes up and me just looking at it brings me back to that time of being three, being five, being 10, 12, whenever it was. And I was feeling like there was no way I could protect myself. And the only way I could protect myself possibly was being silent and just freezing. Um, and this could have been a very serious thing that someone was, could be a dunning, doing to you, being, being done around you, whatever it was. And if it's, if it feels that intense, because for some of those things that happened to me, me going back into it feels like a life or death situation. I felt like I could die, you know, like just going back into feeling and going to this. And I realized that this is a little bit much for me right now on my own in my room or in my house space when I was doing this to explore. And I went to a somatic therapist for some of these things that happened um, that I did deal with. So therapist, somatic therapy. Uh, I know some life coaching people that I work with that with the Hendrix work and they all do somatic therapy. I really like somatic therapy. I went to a shaman for some of this stuff uh, doing, uh, you know, drumming 
journeys, like doing journeying with Shaman, I like that work too. Um, if you had a really good friend that was, you guys are both kind of counseling each other and there's no judgment and there's always kind of an expansive openness in your herd, then that, that can be good. But I think it's really valuable to go to uh, a therapist, somatic therapist, when these things, these big traumas come up. Um, and it's very important to get that support and that help. And what you're really wanting, in my opinion, is you're wanting someone that's going to be there and, be, and to remind you, even though you feel like you're going back to being five and you could die in this situation because you didn't know you had to protect yourself by doing what you did and the way you addressed it, is someone's there saying, you know, you're not five anymore. You're an adult now. That was then. This is now. This is still living in you. This, this, the, the, the emotions and the feeling and the belief maybe that even solidified from this, but, um, you're here now and you're, you're an adult and you can make new, you can make new agreements with yourself. You can, you can make, you can even reframe some of that stuff that happened. Uh, if that, if that needs, needs to happen. Um, so but yeah, so go go get support if it feels really intense and you want that person there to help remind you that you are an adult now and you have the power to, to in a sense, make new beliefs and to let this go and to feel all of the feelings fully and just let them move through you so that you can be fully in your power today with abundance, with health, with peace, with prosperity, with all the goodness, with receiving and giving love at deeper levels than you ever knew you could. So I believe in you and um, I'm looking forward to creating thriving relationships in this world with you in all these different areas of our life that we want um, more abundance and more peace, more clarity and more expansiveness in. Okay, peace.